I told you I was going to publish these videos in quick succession in video number four of this Making Custom Watch Dials series. And here I am in the same clothes because I'm recording all of the intros and conclusions for this section of the series on the same morning. Time hasn't moved much and I've still got my Christopher Ward C8 power reserve on. I guess I could turn around and change into something else. I've got a few other watches back here. My workstation is a mess. I have a ton of projects going on right now, but let's not wait any further on this one. This video, part number five in my Making Custom Watch Dial series is going to walk you through the most important part of this process, and that is the actual painting and printing on the dial. Now this video is longer than the last one. I'm gonna walk you through my process of mixing the ink, you know, aligning the fixture using test dials that I've 3D printed, and then we'll get into printing the actual production dial. So this is a really important video in the series. It's really the main one where the printing or the work actually happens in terms of creating the dial. And so I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it gives you some guidance if you were to try to do this yourself. And that other than that, you know, for watch nerds like us, it's also just interesting. I hope you keep watching, but make sure to subscribe to the channel too. Well, let's get to dial printing. So here I'm just putting the etched plate on the steel base so I can put it in the pad printer. As I said in the last video, there's a notch up here which holds this in place. You can see I've got punches in here for different different bases and then I've got two screws down here to, again, this will hold, this will hold the plate in place while the ink well is on it. Now I'm going to put the steel base in the in the printer. There we go. Slide it in there like that. And then I can tighten up this brace at the back to hold hold the steel plate nicely in in place. And I'll do this a little bit slowly, one side at a time. All right, so I'm measuring my ink in. I put the cup on and I zeroed that out. I'm gonna get to about three grams of this blue. This is a this is about the exact shade of blue I want on the dial. I'm also gonna add thinner to this. If I want this a touch darker, I could add a hint of a hint of black to it. Let's see if that gets me to three. It should get me close. I'm gonna take my little popsicle stick here. Put that in there. All right, so I'm gonna add some thinner in here. As you saw, it was pretty thick pouring out of there. And you wanna get the consistency of a nice maple syrup, to be honest. Um, a grade A, you know, Vermont maple syrup. So I've got about three grams of, of um, paint in here. There's some on the stick. I want to add in about 10% of that. So this is about 2.7. I'm going to bring this up to about three grams with the thinner as a starting point. And then if I need to add in more, I will. So I'll take that and I'm gonna give it a good mix. And I'll try to show you the consistency of it once it's all mixed up, what, what I'm kind of looking for here. That's still a little bit too, let me show you. Maybe just a hair too thick. So the thinner is basically fancy alcohol. It'll evaporate uh, given time and exposure to the air. So if it gets too thick whenever you're trying to print with it, like it's not wanting to come off of the printing pad, you can always add in more thinner. This whole ink thing is really a science sort. It helps to measure, but in my experience, it's also a lot of by sight. Because this stuff and the amount that it goes onto the dial is, you know, very, very small amounts of ink. 
and so it dries very, very quickly when you're actually printing with it. Now we're talking. So I added in just a, a dab more and you can see this is running off a little bit smoother. Like a good syrup. Okay, so that's about where I want it. All right, so what I've done is I, I put the ink cup on the plate and it's magnetic so it's held there. I put the brace over it and attached it with just the screws by hand on the back. So now whenever I move the machine back and forth, the ink cup is sliding with the machine. Okay, now I just gotta put the ink in the in the ink cup. So I'm gonna unscrew this from the top. I'm gonna take my ink and pour it into the ink cup. Basically, I need enough so that I can get the center, you know, everything aligned and figured out correctly in terms of the actual dial print, and then have enough left so that when I print the actual production dial, that there's enough ink left. So I'm going to screw that on so now that won't evaporate from there as easily. Slide that back a little bit. And now I'm going to clean the etched surface so that it's nice and clean to take all the ink into the etching. I'm going to put one of my test dials on the etching plate here. I'm also going to figure out if I need any other adhesive or if this will stay on the plate really on the fixture probably the better term so a couple a couple things I want to do first I want to clean up the silicone pad that I'm printing with So I'm going to take this off. Oops, take this off real quick. And take some regular old rubbing alcohol. Pour it on a t-shirt or any sort of cleaning cloth. And I am going to wipe the surface. Make sure it's as clean as possible. It's something else you'll also need to like clean between prints usually but I'm just making sure that the surface is nice and clean before I print with it so now that I've got that surface clean I'm gonna put this back on give that a tighten and now I'm ready to go with the printing on the test dial anyway see how it goes I apologize if the table shakes a little bit when I'm doing it. I'm going to take some of my thinner. I'm going to pour it directly on the dial plate. This is to clean off the plate itself. Make sure there's no residue or ink or anything of any kind inside The etching like so and now we're ready for a print all right so right now I'm just testing getting this uh, thing centered so basically print move it around and figure out if it's where I want it on on the surface here. And then in this case, it needs to be moved a little bit to the left. So I will make that minor adjustment, tighten it back up again. 
slide it back, come down for another print, and see how close I am to where I want to be. All right, so it's kind of where it's starting to feel like it's pretty close. Like I said, I use a lot of these 3D uh, test blanks. They, they really help with you know figuring out where I am and getting it close to center. And I can clean them back off if I need to. Again, between different prints, I want to clean this out. Make sure the surface is nice and clean. And then I'm going to give this, pull it over the etching like so and we'll give it one more go. So I think I'm getting pretty close to center. I've had to move it to the left. I've had to move it forward a little bit to get the fixture exactly where I want it. So that should be full of ink. Down, give it a quick tap. Looks like I'm definitely around the window. nice as it'll often take multiple hits for this to get printed exactly how you want it. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of the process here. I've been using my 3D printed dials to at least get close with getting the fixture centered. Now it's not perfect because each of these 3D printed dials is just a little bit different than the next. So I use this to get it close. But then I have two versions of the production dial that are metal, which I'll use one to get it really fine-tuned centered, and then the other one will be the actual dial that will go in the watch. This one is two colors. So I have the plate on here. I've got the, the ink set, the ink cup set up. So now that I have everything aligned, I'm mixing one little batch of ink for the final print. This is a lot more time consuming with two, two colors. It's always easier with one, but that's okay. I'm about to print the blue on the dial first, but I have a test dial up here that's just a blank, it's a brass blank, uh, nice and centered. So I'm gonna use it to make sure everything is centered and aligned the way I want. And then when it is, I'll put the actual dial in and print that. So always, always pressing with a test dial before I do the actual production dial. I'm gonna pour this directly on the etching, directly on the plate, and then set the ink cup over it. Just makes less of a mess than pouring it like in the top of the ink cup, usually. And I don't have, there's not so much ink that this will be an issue in terms of spreading out and that sort of thing. So make sure I get as much on there as possible. At least to get me through my prints. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, so that's on there. Let me set my Ink cup on there. So it doesn't dry out. So that's in there. Um, I'll drag that back a little bit. I'm gonna attach my pad. So I'm gonna put the mount on the ink cup. Looks like I'm in my PJs, it's because I am. When you're working in your basement, why not, right? All right, now I'm ready to do some test prints on my dial. The way I can tell this one is exactly where I want it is when the square around the date window is exactly where I want it. Uh, everything else 
you wouldn't be able to tell exactly if it's correct. It's the, uh, the date window that makes the biggest difference visually, the way this is set up. And it's now exactly where I want it. Now that that is exactly where I want it, or I think exactly where I want it, I'm gonna do one more cleanup on here. Double check it. Perfect. Okay, it's exactly where I want. So what I'm gonna do now is clean this off. So now I'm going to take the test dial off. So here is my production dial. It's a brass blank. It's got the dial feed on it there. Fits nicely down in the fixture. So now it's time to see if this will actually look good when it's all said and done. I think it will, I think it will. The real dial goes on. Fill it up with ink. So this is working all right. What I want to do is get nice thick numerals and writing on here for the for the dial. Get some ink in there. But when you get a little bit of smudging, whether it's on the numbers themselves or in different spots on the dial that happen to get picked up by the pad and transferred to the dial, It'll take some of the sharpness out of there. So let me see if I can show you here. So you can see the smudges on there. And I think, oh no, that looks terrible. Well, there's a cool little trick to get that off. And that is, I'm gonna take regular old rubbing alcohol and a nice clean shirt. Pour a little rubbing alcohol on the shirt and just very gently wipe the surface of the dial. All right, so I have two dials that I'm working with. One of them is a practice dial. I, I use my 3D prints to get it centered fairly close, but the 3D prints can each vary ever so slightly, and of course that matters. So I use an actual dial as a, as a practice dial, and once I have it exactly where I want, then I'll put the real dial in and use that. These are done with the blue part of the dial, and so I've got the, the practice one, and I also have, have the real one. Let me show that to you. I'll open it up as well, which looks like so. So this is the actual dial. And what I'm gonna do now is the black printing, which has markers and a few of the numerals. So there'll be markers between the different numbers, and then the three, the six, the nine, and then some letters here at six o'clock. So I'm gonna put the practice dial on, I'm going to put in the next etching uh, plate, and then I'm gonna put mix some black ink, put the black ink on the printer, get my cup ready, and then I'll print the black. I keep the etchings wrapped up in this saran wrap which is nice way to protect it. So the design I'm printing now is this one. As you can see here was, here's the 24, the GMT date window. So that's the pattern printed on there. And now I'm going to print the black. So that'll go between all of the other 
numerals on here and complete the design for this particular dial. So I do have some extra grease on this steel plate just to give a little bit more friction to the, the plate sitting on top of the steel base. There's the notch and the two screws. So I'll set this in here and put the plate down, get the holes centered up for the screws. And again, just trying to get that as centered as possible. And then I will take the screws here. and put them on the printer. And I'm just gonna get that just tightened, or just to where it stops turning with a little bit of pressure, like so. And then I'll do the next one, and then I'll slowly tighten up each side. All right, so that's basically hand tightened on there. So that plate won't move on me while I'm working on it. I'm just gonna make sure that this is just about centered where I want it. Okay, pretty good. And now I can start working on getting the ink ready and put in a couple uh, test dials. I'll probably start with this other 3D printed dial that's also got a primer on it, just to see what it looks like initially. Then I will switch to the real practice dial and then the real dial. Okay, so just to show you this process a little bit, Again, my hands will be a little bit in the way, but I've got my ink mixed the way I want. The consistency of a nice maple syrup. And the easiest way to do this really is I'm just gonna pour it directly onto the, the plate. If I need more, I'll make more. This should be plenty. Okay, trying to be as unwasteful as possible. So you can see the pool of black ink there. And then I will take my ink cup and place it over that. Okay. And then I will I'm gonna move this back a little bit. Put the pad back on. like so. I've got to put the mounting bracket on back here. Now I'm gonna take, this is a 3D printed dial that has a primer on it that I was using as a test. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there. One, one little trick is I have some Elmer's glue here is if I feel like I don't have enough pressure to hold the dial down with just the dial feet, I just put a little Elmer's glue on the back of this and I'll spread it around a little bit. Just adds a little extra stickiness to the fixture. So when the pad comes down on, on this, it sticks a little bit more, is, in, is likely to smear or come back up with the, with the pad. Okay, this will tell me if I'm close and then the actual test dial will tell me exactly how close I am but this should be fairly, fairly accurate. Since everything is sort of set up from what I did with the blue in terms of the fixture and uh, the plates and so on. So, all right, I'm going to pull the ink into the correct location. So the ink is sitting over the, the etching and then I'll push it back pick it up on the pad and see how it prints uh, dial. okay I'm gonna try this with the, the 3d print so I'm just seeing how well those markers come down 
I'm going to clean this up and see how well it comes down on the metal dial. I have markings to help me keep it centered. And this is going to tell me really close where I'm at. Okay, so this is the practice dial. Hopefully you're finding this process helpful. So I need to bring this to the left. Now, I actually think I'm fairly centered on this. So my test dial here is pretty well shot after sort of doing some of this general alignment. And what I'm going to do is when I think I'm right there, I'm, I'm taking this off of here. Hopefully I'll leave a few of the numerals on here, just for some general context, at least the window and whatnot. Setting this back on here. I'm gonna give it one more hit. One last double check before I put the real dial on. Alright my friends, so I have it exactly where I want it, I hope, and so this is the production dial, and again, usually I'd like to have more than one going into this process, but in this circumstance, I only ended up with one, so it needs to be good. Get that a little bit sticky again. And wish us luck. All right, so that's down there. I'm gonna use tissue paper here just to give it a press down. Fill this up with ink. If I can get one really good press, that'll be enough. Um, if I think I need a second, I'll do that. But we'll see. I'm going to do one more press on it. Yeah, I'm trying not to think too much about it. I'm just trying to let the process do the work. Like, it's just hard to just let go and let it, you know what, I'm going to let it do its thing and it'll turn out okay. Now, There we go, done. And let me pull this up. It could have, it, it, it'd be hard to do better than what I've got this uh, with my pad printer set up. So let me pull this out here. Once this is in the watch, you won't be able to tell that it may be, you know, a little bit closer to the edge on one side than the other, but this is pretty good for me. So now you've seen the process that I go through to print a dial. This one had two colors, and hopefully that also gives you some insight into how complicated even just one additional variable, a different color, two colors on a dial can, can make custom printing. Creating custom one-off dials is not something a lot of people do, but it's the way I enjoy working with my brand, uh, building one-off custom watches for people. And so hopefully this will help you if you are intending or wanting to do the same. But Watch for the next video. I'm going to show you how to then go about cleaning up the dial now that it's printed. We'll talk about, you know, giving it some tender care and then get it ready for putting in the watch case. 
So again, I'm Brian. This is Watch Complications. Subscribe to the channel and keep watching.